Hey everybody, it's your hospitality friend Glenn out here, and today we're going to do a little bit of a legislative update and kind of a mini show for you. I've been out on the road and I've been talking to all you hoteliers out there, and listen, while business is still good out there, we need more help from government to enable the mechanisms in order for us to be successful. And sometimes government seems to get in the way of it or has the opportunity um, to throw up major blockades that we all need to focus on so we can be informed and fight against them. So today I've got interim CEO of the American Hotel and Lodging Association, Mr. Kevin Carey, joining us for an update on everything hospitality when it comes to legislative issues. Great to see you, Kevin. Hi, Gwen. Good to see you. I will tell you, this, you, this interim thing is uh, really taking to you. You look, you look great. You look, uh, you look like you're ready to have yeah, yeah, you're ready to get out there and fight for our our, our, our rights for for sure. But um, hey, so I want to know what's going on. I've been seeing some of your people on the road because we go to the same events. And what I like about what you do is you're getting out there mm-hmm. with all the different team members to really share what's happening in person, in addition to all the other great stuff you do. But I think that's a great uh, great opportunity for everyone to really ask questions and then have one on one time with your uh, representatives uh, out there. I just saw Sharag last we uh, the week before last, um, and uh, it's great that I got that update, but I wanted to capture this for the entire industry to hear uh, all at once. I want to talk about what your top priorities are, and to me, let's start with a big win. Uh, per diem rates in 2025 are going up. Thanks for helping with that, guys. Well, that's an annual effort uh, of our team yep. and working with the Congress and, and the General Services Administration, and, and meaningfully, uh, that increases the per diem rate, and that translates directly uh, into business, into new revenues for our hotel members who serve federal travelers. So uh, it's an annual effort. Uh, we're pleased to see that increase yet again this year, uh, both on the lodging per diem rate, but also uh, on the food side, food and beverage side, uh, which obviously the, we'll see a benefit from in the industry as well. Yeah, for sure. It's starting October 20, uh, uh, sorry, October 1st, 2024. Uh, hotel allowances are up $3 to $110 per day, and standard meals and incidentals allowances up by $9 to $68 per day. First increase in three years in that category. I'm sure that's something that hoteliers are going to be happy to hear, but um, I'd like to see it go a little bit higher because the cost of serving those meals, for example, have uh, risen, but this should help people take a little bit of breath, right? Absolutely. It's a, it's a big segment of business uh, for many of our, our member companies uh, and our team works on this and, and pays close attention to this on an annual basis. And you're right, the, the amount of the increase varies from year to year, but back in the COVID timeframe and certainly over the last several years, uh, this is an important uh, lift uh, that, that again, translates directly into new business for our member companies in the industry. All right. That's all money you get sent right to the bottom line, folks. So if you're not focused on that government business, it could be a very valuable uh, way to do it. Hey, Kevin, do any advice on how people could get more government business so they have that sense of uh, you know business security? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the one thing I just want to comment that you, that you mentioned is just uh, uh, our team being on the road and engaging with the industry. Uh, th- that's central to, as we think about the back half of the year and, and finishing strong, how we engage and activate our member companies in the industry uh, in HLA and AHLA foundations programs uh, is really front and center for us. And we've got so many uh, different initiatives where we're participating in the brand conferences. Earlier this week, we hosted close to 50 of the largest hotel owners uh, in the country in Chicago for a discussion about the owner specific set of issues. Um, We have a number of opportunities over the balance of this year. And next week uh, here in Washington, we're going to be bringing well over 200 hotel industry members together and representatives from 36 states uh, who are going to be going door to door uh, on Capitol Hill and meeting with elected officials uh, to to press the case and identify the issues of priority for the hotel industry. And I do want to say by next week, Kevin, it means this week because you guys, you're watching us in the past because we recorded this last week. So yes, so this week be in D.C. to do that. I love being able to get out there and share our stories directly with the people or the aids of the people that really hold a lot of our, you know, operational success in the palms of their, their hands. So, um, I remember going and, you know, you could really teach them about what an important industry this is. And still to this day, 
Um, it's shocking to me that they don't realize that the hospitality industry is so massive. It, you know, if you're looking at jobs throughout the whole country, it's like one in eight jobs have direct or indirect creation because of our business. Yeah, we, we, we reinforce that message uh, that, that you just gave uh, in all the opportunities we have uh, to speak to our membership and industry leaders. Um, yep. that, that principle of active engagement, telling the industry stories, meeting your elected officials at a local, a state, and at a federal level is essential because you're absolutely right. Uh, the, the knowledge of the industry structure, the complexity around it, and the range of issues uh, that can impede uh, or advance uh, the industry are things we need to be vocal on uh, in continuously representing uh, that message and delivering that message. Right. And for every win, such as uh, focus on the GSA every year, you know, you've got to you, you've got to fight back against some of these potential losses that are going to happen out there. And you guys have done a great job, uh, first of all, beating back some ridiculous legislation in uh, Los Angeles. And now New York City, uh, the New York City Council has been uh, proposing legislation that just seems absolutely uh, fiscally irresponsible to me, where they're trying to impose uh, onerous and unnecessary staffing requirements on hotels and mandate other rules to disrupt hotel operations. So. I know there's some licensing structure in there and direct employer of all housekeeping and room attendants. What is going on more specifically? Well, you're not the only one shaking your head. Uh, I, I just, well. It's crazy. It's like, even if like I never went, uh, if I never went to a hotel a day in my life, I would still understand that this is dumb. So I don't get it. Right. right. So, so in New York City, the, the hotel industry uh, is an economic powerhouse. Uh, it directly employs 42,000 people. Uh, on an overall basis, close to 260,000 jobs are dependent upon the hotel industry as part of the tourism economy. Five billion in economic contribution from a tax revenue standpoint, 74 billion overall. This is an industry that should be supported and cultivated by the city government. Right. Um, instead, uh, we've got a city council that, that's rushing headlong to push itself into an industry that it doesn't understand uh, right. and, and really put at risk uh, not only the deliver grave consequences to the hotel industry, but workers, consumers, right. uh, the tourism economy overall. And, and that's why we've been so uh, vocal, uh, inactive on this issue. All right, so here's something that's absolutely insane to me. So it would prohibit New York City hotels from subcontracting out key operations, as I mentioned, like housekeeping, uh, room attendance, uh, laundry, I guess, would be under there. How could a hotel in New York City it's a select service property, for example, handle their own laundry if they don't already have a facility built for something yeah. like that. And so many hotels over the years remove the laundry facility, helping to create jobs with third party companies that do that and housekeeping and other things. It's just it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, the, the proponents of the bill uh, would tell you that this is all about safety. Uh, and, and that uh, this is a problem that doesn't exist, real intended to address a small number of bad actors. Uh, right. So the issues you just touched on, uh, prohibitions or restrictions around subcontractors, which obviously is a legitimate, uh, flexible business model that the industry right. needs to employ. And by the way, so do many other industries uh, and, and several governments uh, utilize subcontractors uh, for their own services uh, yeah. to, to note that as well. So uh, this bill goes so far beyond safety related issues and is sweeping in its scope uh, that, that really, uh, if it advances, it's gonna do grave damage uh, to the economy, the industry, consumers are gonna see higher rates uh, at, at the hotel property and a lack of choice. And importantly, on the subcontractor issue that you just referenced, Glenn, this is gonna impact small businesses uh, and many of whom are minority and women owned small business. I know one very specifically that does Housekeep uh, that does housekeeping for a lot of hotels, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we've been uh, focused very actively on on bringing a, a, a vigorous opposition to this issue, um, rallying the industry uh, and interdependent segments of the industry. We pulled together a coalition last week uh, that brought together over a thousand people on city hall steps uh, with a rally and a press conference to really showcase the breadth and depth of the opposition. To this bill yeah it's a it, it really really silly and i want to say something to all of you out there the new word to to look out for whenever politicians use it is the word safety 
Same thing with a lot of major companies that are trying to take away your rights that are out there. The whole thing with uh, right to repair falls under the safety thing. Um, you know, the big auto companies are trying to push out the mom and pop, uh, you know, places that'll fix your car by claiming safety issues. So whenever you see safety, it's a giant red flag as far as I'm concerned. Well, 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 yeah. Brian, just to, to, to build on that, uh, yeah. this industry, the hotel industry, has a strong track record and a long-standing history uh, of bringing forth platforms and programs that directly speak to the, the paramount importance of safety of not only guests, but workers. Whether it's the five-star promise AHLA advanced a number of years ago, safe stay through COVID, right. and, and certainly the work uh, that our foundation is leading around uh, the program uh, of no room for trafficking. Um, all these areas speak uh, in a powerful way to the industry's commitment uh, and leadership efforts uh, to advance the safety, again, not only of guests, uh, but also uh, the workforce and our employees. And that's why it bothers me so much at the perverting the word of safety, because uh, the AHLA and other incredible organizations in the last 10 years have transformed uh, a zero understanding of what human trafficking is, and even a societal tacit acceptance of it by just allowing it to be unfixed to the number one thing that I think we all think about yeah. these days. I can't go into a restroom without seeing little signs if you need help. Um, you know, TSA has done a great job with it. So thank you. Well, the two million, million employees in the industry now uh, have been trained on the No Room for Trafficking uh, awareness program. Uh, we've also just recently, within the last several weeks, hosted the third annual No Room for Trafficking Summit. Yeah. Uh, it made grants uh, totaling $1 million uh, to organizations who are helping support survivors of human trafficking. So this industry uh, is responsible in its efforts. Again, guest and employee safety is of paramount importance. Uh, and we're gonna continue uh, to do those initiatives and make sure that elected officials know about those. And, and you know what? It would be great if they talked to us in advance uh, right. of, of moving forward on this irresponsible legislation uh, because we'd tell that story uh, and they would know the actions this industry is already undertaking. Which brings us back to where you're going to be this week on Capitol Hill, being able to share some of those stories. Also, I'm curious, what's going on in Boston? Are they looking at uh, L.A. and New York and having a hold my beer moment or what's going on there? Well, uh, prior to New York uh, rearing its head in, in middle of July, uh, our, our focus in, 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 in concentrated efforts uh, was in Boston uh, from the early spring forward, where the city council there brought forward. Uh, an ordinance uh, proposing a, a number of initiatives, uh, mm -hmm. but the one that was most concerning was a measure to create an independent panel uh, that would have unelected independent panel that would have unique powers and rights to set workplace okay. standards uh, and, and to make decisions on behalf of the industry. So uh, we were highly engaged there and are continuing to meet not only with the city council, but recently our team, uh, myself included, were there meeting with the mayor's staff uh, mm -hmm. in highlighting uh, uh, the problems and the strong concerns uh, that we have with this approach. I appreciate real regulations for actual safety and the protection of, uh, you know, of business. But when they start to overstep those bounds and go into areas that have nothing to do with uh, capitalism and the way our whole government is structured, I find that to be really uh, uh, offensive. And is this something that's always been the case or has government been encroaching more and more, do you think, in recent years? Well, certainly uh, that, that that's the case that we're seeing uh, and, and why um, we certainly uh, encourage our members uh, to uh, work with us, get engaged and get active again at all levels of government to build those relationships and tell the industry story. But in Boston, you've got a market that's performing well. Uh, they're attracting uh, convention and tourism business. Uh, the leisure business is strong. Uh, and, and and where they're focusing again on the safety issues, um, they're actually putting the market at risk uh, from from losing business by creating an impression that the market is not safe uh, yeah. or that there are issues from a safety perspective in hotels, which is not the case uh, at, at all. And if you look back to what was going on, you know, during that period of the, the C word and, you know, politics was really uh, taking sides on certain things. There were a lot of people that said, we won't do business in that state. We won't stay at a hotel in that state. We'll do our event somewhere else instead. So you've got to get out there and help. So, uh, Kevin, you know, 
I just got back from that 10 day uh, road trip. And the last part of it was because I wanted to go to an event uh, called Tribal Net. It's all about Native American gaming. And one of the things that I found fascinating about it is it's so parallel to our business, but it's in like a completely different silo. And then you got the the gaming industry separately from the tribal gaming. And that seems to be a very different silo that's there. And it frustrates me. And one of the things that I want to keep doing is trying to break down those silos so we could all be more successful together. And uh, that's why I'll be going uh, back to the hospitality show, October 28th and 30th that you guys are putting on. I had a great time last year and I love the whole ideas behind what I just said, kind of breaking down those barriers within our industry to kind of get the different silos to talk to, to talk mm -hmm. to each other. Well, thank you for 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 your involvement as, as a valued member of our advisory board uh, and giving us your counsel uh, on the structure of the event. But uh, you know, our, our structure at HLA is to represent all segments of the industry. Uh, so, bringing the owners, the brand companies, the management companies, including the service providers, uh, together um, in a single place uh, to focus on the issues of most consequence for the industry from a forward-looking perspective. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's consistent with our mission and structure. Uh, and we were thrilled with the inaugural hospitality show last year. Uh, and we're hugely enthusiastic uh, about the plans in place uh, and the directions and, and how things are pacing uh, for San Antonio as we look ahead to next month. Uh, it's going to be a, a great event. And I know you uh, recently added some uh, new components to it. You got some new speakers and programs. Overall, uh, so we've got close to 12 hours of what, what is going to be extremely high value main stage content. You're going to mm -hmm. hear from industry leaders, uh, CEOs in the industry from Jeff Bellotti, uh, Jonathan Tish is going to be on main stage. We've got some highlight uh, keynotes uh, from Jose Andres, uh, Aaron Andrews. We're going to be focusing on issues from technology to franchising uh, to workforce issues, sustainability uh, across the board. Uh, so many powerful issues that are front and center in the industry agenda are going to be expanded upon, uh, considered and discussed uh, not only on the main stage, but across uh, the trade show floor uh, where uh, we're close to sold out uh, and the enthusiasm around um, the interactions uh, that are going to take place there are really starting to build as as we get closer to uh, year two of the hospitality show. And with you folks having like the GM program as well, that's a great way to get some of these groups to uh, to mix. And, and Kevin, you know, I, I'm on the road so much and it's like one day I'm at a technology event, then I'm at a design event, then I'm at, you know, some people focused of, event. So it's so great to see that I could have these conversations and help people connect the dots. And, you know, maybe there'll be others. Uh, like me, that's involved in all the different uh, silos because of your event. So, well, uh, bringing it all together and playing that that role as a convening entity for the industry uh, is really one of the the, the core uh, services uh, and, and attributes that HLA represents for the industry. So, you'll see that at the hotel at the hospitality show. Uh, our, our partners with Questex, uh, we've been working actively since the last year's show in Las Vegas. Uh, the GM uh, event that you reference. Uh, we've got some special things planned, focusing on hotel owners as well uh, and lenders. Uh, so across the board, uh, we just have uh, so much content, networking, uh, and a great experience that we're going to deliver for the attendees. Excellent. And I hope to see all of you out there at the Hospitality Show. It's easy enough to uh, register. Go to thehospitalityshow.com, thehospitalityshow.com. Also, San Antonio, that city's perfect for uh, conventions. I love the whole river walk area that sets it up for everyone to have parties and you can just kind of stroll from one area to another. So if it wasn't going to be in Vegas again. I think you picked a great city. Well, we're thrilled with the venue. Uh, it, it's, it is an outstanding city and uh, they know, do know how to do it right there. Yeah, for sure. Kevin, thanks so much for, uh, for giving us all this great information today about all of these issues that all of us, people that are passionate about this business need to be thinking. Great, Glenn. Look forward to seeing you soon on the road. Appreciate I look forward to, it. Yeah, I'll just say goodbye for both of us. I look forward to seeing all of you folks uh, out there. Get to Washington, D.C. this week. I wish I could be there uh, myself, but I'm going to be traveling for a month, and I need a few days at, at home. But I will see you at the hospitality show. So have a good time. So for Kevin and myself, Glenn, we'll see you next time. Have a great day.